We were created to need blessing. Bless with his love. Practice the kingdom blessing. We're people that have been blessed to be a blessing. God bless you. The art of blessing. Hey folks, welcome back to Pleasant Places. I'm glad you're in this series with us on the art of blessing. It's, it's learning. We never graduate and say, well, I've got a PhD in knowing how to be a blessing to others. As we learn in this series, it's, it's costly uh, to be a blessing. In fact, we're going to even raise the bar some in the cost of being a blessing to others. Uh, we have been obligated by His love to be a blessing for Him, with Him, through Him, to other people. I can't, I can't be a blessing to anybody without Him. I can't be a blessing until I've received His blessing. I know who He is. We discover who our God is, our Father in Heaven is. We discover by being recipients of, of His blessings. It, it, it reveals His goodness, His kindness, His mercy, His tenderness, His patience uh, to us. But you know, Jesus says some words sometimes that would be easy to skip uh, in the Bible and, and you know, because they're, they're, they're hard to hear. Uh, this is heavy lifting. Uh, this is stuff that is grace required. Uh, just there should be a warning label over these words. Uh, warning. Uh, these are really difficult. I could almost use the word impossible. These are impossible things He's going to ask us on our own and our own strength. Will God ever ask you to do something that's more than you can do? Absolutely. But He won't ask you to do more than He will give you grace to do. So Jesus says in Luke, the Gospel, chapter 6, Verse 27, he says, I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Oh, man, I mean, you could just stop right there. Love your enemies. Do good to those that do good to you. No, he says, do good to those that hate you. Verse 28, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other, that's how we're raised in America, right? If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other one. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Now, he's not teaching against justice and, and law and legal, and, and try, but these are, these are bringing us to a place where where we follow our Father in heaven like Jesus did. He's bringing us to a place of carrying the cross. So stay with Him. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's what we refer to as the golden rule. In Luke 6, 31, do unto others. How? How do you do to others? The way you want others to treat you. Now he's going to kind of reiterate this and unpack it in these next verses again. He says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners. Now, this is just a, the broken, fallen world. If you love them, usually they love you. Now, there, are, there is the category of the dark darkness of people that hate those who do good to them. They hate those who love them. That's, a, that's just a depraved, dark, there is a, a, a section of people in this world that are that evil, that, that you, you try to be good to them, they hate you for it. You try to love them, they hate you. That's that. now, but, but Jesus is going to give various examples of loving those who love you. He says, that's what lost people can do. Verse 33, if you do good to those that are good to you, what credit is it for you? Even sinners do that. He says this a second time. And then verse 34, if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that for you? Even sinners lend to other sinners expecting to get paid back. He says, but love your enemies, do good to those, lend without expecting anything. Wow. Then your reward will be great. You will be the sons or daughters of the Most High. 
you're not earning it. You're, you're revealing, I'm acting like who my father is. As Jesus says, you'll be sons and daughters of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. This, this, is, this is heavy lifting. This is like, this is graduate level spirituality. This is the meat of the word of God. Not worrying about what the mark of the beast is and worrying about the seven seals in the book of Revelation and worrying about, you know, the raptures that are going to be before, during, or after the tribulation. This is the meat of the word of God. This is the, the deep things of the word of God. It's not hard to understand. It doesn't take a brain surgeon. A young child, you could read these verses to, and they would go, got it. What's difficult is not the complexity, but the cost of becoming this type of a person. Nobody can do this except for Jesus. He's the only one that was able to model these things. I can't do this in my own strength. Now, he, 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 he lifts the bar in varying degrees. First, he, he kind of says, listen, my standard is not sinners. He, he says, I don't look at my children and say, well, at least my kids aren't as bad as these kids. You know, God's not comparing us to people that don't know his love, haven't received his blessing, haven't been redeemed, haven't been baptized, had our sins washed away, been filled with the Holy Spirit, revealed the Word of God to. He doesn't have those expectations up here for lost people. You know, lost people act like lost people. People without Christ that are blind, that, that are filled with, with sin, led by darkness, they act like people that are led by darkness. So we can have a tendency to look pretty good if we compare ourselves to those around us that don't know Jesus. And he says, no, because even sinners, if you do good to them, they'll, they'll do something good for you. If you give them something, they, they'll, they'll, knowing that they're gonna get, they'll give you something knowing they're going to get it back. You repay it. They might make a loan. Uh, they, 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 they might even uh, do something, uh, an act of even kindness because you've done an act of kindness to them. Well, what Jesus is saying is, is I'm not telling you to go and love people that love you. Absol absolutely, we ought to do that. He's not saying, I want you to go be good to those that are good to you. And that, again, it, it, how broken are we? And at times I've been broken where people that have loved me, I've not loved them right. That's just brokenness. That's how far short I fall of the blessing of God and walking in it in my life. But he's not saying do good to those that are good to you and lend to those that will pay you back. He says, I want you, first of all, to love those that are enemies. Now, they might be national enemies, people that hate America. We have to love them. That doesn't mean we don't have an army. That doesn't mean we don't defend ourselves. That doesn't mean we don't have security for our country. But as a Christian, my heart should never rejoice that our enemies are annihilated. They're human beings in his image. Even our enemies in other nations that hate us, burn our flag and, and curse America, we're called to pray for them. But where's your heart in that? How about your political enemies? And I know there are people that are opposing political views. They're not only difficult to swallow their views, but you want to choke them. I do. And God says, no, they're humans in my image. I want you to love them. But love them. They're idiots. You're an idiot, son, and I love you. So he calls us to love our enemies, to bless those who persecute us. Now, now, now you're a whole nother level. It's one thing to try to love somebody that's unlovable, but now he's saying to bless them, to pray for them, to do good to them, expecting nothing. Don't forget that. He says it in verse uh, 34, the end of the verse. Even sinners lend the sinners, expecting to be repaid. But verse, verse 35, 
but love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting anything. I had a, a young man uh, shared with me the other day, he finally mustered up the courage to go to somebody and apologize to them. That person had hurt their feelings. And he went and apologized, commendable thing to do. But his expectations were that the one he was apologizing to would probably say they were sorry. And he had these expectations on how they ought to react. And it didn't go the way. I've had that happen in my own life, where I went to finally humble myself, and I go to somebody, I go to apologize to them, and they say something to me that makes me madder than I was mad at them to begin with, that I went to apologize about. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, it shows my expectations were I wanted something from them instead of I want to do this unto the Lord. If we're going to be people of blessing, we have to learn how to love without expectation. That takes the cross. That means we have to be good to people that are bad to us. We have to be kind to people that are unkind to us. We have to speak blessing on those that are speaking curses. We're overcoming evil with good. I, I don't want to just be known as, hey, I can, I can be as nice as a lost person who doesn't have the Holy Spirit, doesn't have God as his Father, doesn't know the power of prayer, never been filled with the Spirit, doesn't know the joy of forgiveness, doesn't know the grace of God that redeems and sets us free and helps us. They don't have any of those resources. No wonder they're mean and nasty. What's my excuse? So I'm letting my flesh control me instead of letting God's love, God's grace. These calls to blessing are calls to come to Jesus for help. I, I need you, Lord. I can't, I can't forgive somebody that's hurt me. That's, it's hard to do that. I need your grace. I can't pray blessings on somebody that has spoken evil of me or hurt my family or stolen from me. It's heavy lifting. But he expects us to be his children. He has a higher standard. Not a standard that we can live up to by our own strength and therefore God will like us, but a standard that he calls us to live up to by his grace. That when we reach it, and I love someone unlovable, I don't brag about it. It's the grace of God. That's attractive. A church that loves the unlovable, like I believe the vineyard is, it's attractive to people. There's, a, there's an unattractiveness to people that are bitter, angry, vengeful, spiteful, arrogant, proud, condemning, judgmental. That's not attractive. That doesn't make people say, I want what you have. But if we're going to be people that learn the art of blessing others. I, I love the story that was told. It wasn't, I heard it from the lady. She was a, a single lady living in an apartment complex and she woke up one morning, opened her door to go out and there was a, a dead, I, I believe it was a, we'll say a cat, uh, but there was a dead animal laying at her door. She knew some people had moved in that had this really weirdness about them and, and across the, 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 the hall in her apartment. She had tried to say God bless them and love them and, and, and welcome them, and they made it real clear that they were, they were Satanist. They were just full-blown, in the occult, practicing witchcraft people. And, and they knew she was a Christian, and they left a, a dead sacrifice. Now, what would you do? I, I call 911, you know, get, go get your, you know, go get your gun, you know, what, you know, uh, go, go put, you know, pig's blood on their door, chop a pig's head. I, what would you do? This is what she did. She went in and she baked her best chocolate chip cookies. She put them in a beautiful little presentation and she carried them across and she set them at the people's door. You cursed me with a dead animal, I bless you with chocolate chip cookies. It, they had nowhere to put it. They wanted her to be angry. They wanted her to fight back. They wanted her to be like them and to try to curse them because when she curses them, that opens the door for their curses to come. They, did not, they had no self, there is no self-defense for that kind of love. You know, my wife and I, for a number of years, had neighbors that were just 
addicts and they fought and they beat each other and they screamed and the police come and the ambulances come and they had this dog, this Doberman that just, I mean, literally from, from me to you, from, this, from your television screen to where you're watching it at, they had this Doberman that lived outside of our bedroom and I had a one little area on my porch I could sit and have privacy and have my little porch of peace and that dog would bark at a Doberman level that was just insane. I'm telling you, I dreamed of killing that dog. I dreamed of crawling over the fence and pounding that guy. I mean, because he would stand at his fence and scream insults. And, and you know, there were times I called the police. I tried to appeal to a higher authority. And by the time the police got there, they were smart. They were in their house, shut the door, and they never answered the door. They just passed out. This went on for so long. And I finally just, out of desperation and my wife's pleading, said, honey, we need to, and I tried prayer, but it was selfish prayers. It was prayers like God killed the dog. And God, those aren't prayers of blessing that God hears. Those are curses. And so finally I repented and I looked for a window and I, I said to my neighbor, I said, uh, oh, you know, I'll call him, uh, you know, Fred. I said, Fred, listen, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. We, we've been, you know, really not good neighbors. And, and a minute I started apologizing. He was ready for another argument. He didn't know what to do with it. Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry about it. Because he knew he'd been a, a, a rear end to us over and over again. Now, I appealed to him by, by humbling myself. Now, did the dog get better? Yeah, maybe a little bit. But I got better in my heart. And, you know, not out of running from it, but God blessed us to, to get out of there. And, and, and I just say to you that you can overcome internally even when the external things don't change. And we left knowing that we had blessed them. We left knowing that we had been kind to those that had been really unkind to us. And I just know that, it, it, you know, Jesus talks about, you know, the Father pouring out blessings on those that are un, unkind and, and un, you know, they're, they're evil, ungrateful. Loving your enemies. It, again, it could be political, nationalistic, it could, but it could be right near home. There's times that there's people in your family that become your enemies. There's times people in your own church become your enemies. There's times people get sideways with you. And, and it, 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 it brings it right, right at home. How do, you, how do you deal with that? Do you deal with it like the sinners that give an eye for an eye, that a tit for a tat? You know, you got me, I get you back. I get you worse. Uh, do you deal with it with, I, I, don't, I don't get mad, I get even? Do you deal with it by just cutting them off and rejecting them? Or do you practice the kingdom blessing of doing good to those that are unkind, loving. You can't stay mad at someone you're praying for. You can't stay mad at somebody you're blessing. That's heavy lifting. You gotta work on unforgiveness in your heart. You gotta work on bitterness, your anger, your impatience, your selfishness. I, I hope this week, I wanna challenge you to think about doing acts of kindness to somebody that you'll never get anything back from them. That you'll never get a reward or you'll never get, you, you just. Find ways to bless somebody that, that doesn't, there's no way, they don't have any way to give you it back. They, they're, they're incapacitated to do something for you or they're unable or, or they don't even know you're the one that did it. But, but practice some level of putting more weight on the bar because if you want to walk in blessing, you've got to learn to follow the footsteps of Jesus. It's expensive. It's costly. You've got to lift the cross. It's heavy lifting. To die to what Jamie wants, the selfishness and revenge and, and impatient and the curse those that curse me. And, 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 and that's not what the Lord expects out of us, church. We're called to a higher standard. We're called to the standard of Jesus. I want to be like my Father in heaven. He's kind to people that don't deserve it. He blesses people that are ungrateful for it. You ever done something for somebody and they didn't thank you, and you get all un, uh, mad. At, you know, it's sad on their part, but to get all upset meant I had a string attached. You know, I, I, I wrote a book and called The Power of Ugly, and, and I've, I've given that book away to so many people. But so many people I gave that book to, my real motive was that they would read it, really like it, and say, 
how can we help you promote it? And, uh, uh, and I can't tell you the number of people I've given the book to that I've never heard anything back from them. I didn't hear, there was a great book or I hated the book. I hear nothing back. And I have a tendency, I get, I get an angst at them because somehow I had an expectation. There was a string attached to the gift. I wanted something from them. That's not a blessing. A blessing comes without a string attached, without an agenda, without a manipulation, without an expectation of I want something from you because I did something for you. And that is the kingdom heart of Jesus, to bless with his love. You won't do it in your own strength, but I'm telling you, he'll be pleased and reward you when you do it in his strength and it'll be attractive for the gospel. Let's pray. Father, first I'd just say, forgive me where I've failed in these, these scriptures. I've failed in loving with your kind of love. But Lord, I can't manufacture it, I can't produce it, but I can yield to you, Lord, and you can love through me. Teach our groups, teach our church how to be blessers, people of blessing like our Heavenly Father, like you, that we can bless like you, Father, by your grace, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.